Greetings, viewers. Eric the Car Guy here, back again with another fun-filled episode. I say fun-filled because I know that uh, a lot of you viewers really enjoy these videos where I tear things apart. And today, we have a, an automatic transmission out of a uh, Toyota Corolla. Um, I'm not really sure. I've actually had this transmission sitting around for about two years now, uh, waiting to do this video. So, today's the day. Today is the day I tear it apart. And this may end up being a series of videos. What I'm trying to do in this one is just sort of give you a general overview of what the parts are. I'm not gonna to claim to be an automatic transmission expert, although I have taken them apart. I do know the parts on the insides of them. Uh, normally, when I run into a situation where I need to uh, deal with an automatic transmission that has failed, I just replace it. I, I don't normally go through the, the process of rebuilding it. Uh, and if you do find yourself in that position, strongly recommend, recommend that you go with a rebuilt transmission. And if you're looking for a place that uh, is going to rebuild your transmission for you, one of the key things I think that, that you should look for in a place that rebuilds automatic transmissions is that they have a transmission dyno. And what that does is that's actually something that they can hook the transmission up to and run it before they ever put it on the car. Usually these places, they, they build enough transmissions to, to know what they're doing to give you a, a quality rebuild. And that's, that's really important because the automatic transmission is by far and away the most complex component on a vehicle. So th there's a lot of things that can go wrong if it's not done properly. And there's a lot of work to get that thing in and out of there on top of that. So you want to make sure that it's done and done correctly. But I've sat here and talked for long enough. So let's go over to the transmission uh, and just get a general overview of, of the things that are on the outside of it. Uh, just to get an idea of some of those components that we can see externally. Let's, uh, let's head over there now. Okay, let's first get a look at the outside here and just sort of put a name to some of this stuff. Um, and the first thing that, that we're going to see is the torque converter. And this is the component that actually bolts up the flex plate on the uh, engine and rotates and basically feeds power to the transmission. And, and it does a couple of things. It, it provides like a fluid coupling between the engine and the transmission itself. It also powers the front pump, uh, and it also multiplies torque. In fact, I think I'm gonna do a video just on the torque converter itself. This little arm here is not normally here. It's basically just there when you put an automatic transmission in to transport it from one place to another. So you normally, normally you, you just don't see that. Now, going back around the outside here, we have uh, the dipstick and these cooler lines which would normally be hooked up to the transmission. And this, this, these are the lines that send uh, transmission fluid to the cooler inside of your radiator. Some even have an external cooler, and I could just pull that out like that, which is kind of convenient. On the outside here, we have what, what I often call a Prindle switch. Um, and I say that because uh, park, reverse, neutral, drive. Uh, but it also drives the manual valve, and each time you, you change, like you, you put your car into a particular gear, I think that's probably park there. Um, re reverse, neutral, drive, um, second, or low, let's see. Park, reverse, neutral, drive, second, or low. One of those two. So this would be connected to uh, probably the, the lever on the console in this one or sometimes it'll be on a column shifter, but there's basically a cable that moves this for gear selection. This switch here uh, many times has your reverse lights in it. It also tells you what, uh, it gives you the indicator on the dash, but more importantly, it sends a signal to the uh, PCM or transmission control module. There may be a separate computer for this and tells it what gear you're in. Because uh, many times, especially newer transmissions are not only hydraulically controlled, but they're also electronically controlled. Now, this guy here is a long cable, and that cable will connect to the throttle, uh, right next to the throttle cable. And it is called, actually, a throttle or TV cable. Uh, and what it does is it sends a, a mechanical signal to the transmission and tells it how far you're into the gas. So there are times when you're just cruising down the road and you step on the gas and the transmission will shift at a, at a fairly reasonable place. So the gears will come like uh, at lower speeds. But say for instance you want to accelerate hard, well this cable signal or the signal that comes down to the transmission basically tells it to hold those gears longer because you're looking to you know get maximum acceleration. 
and then everything in between. So it knows how far you are into the throttle via this mechanical connection. Uh, newer transmissions use a lot of electronic controls for this. So this, this I believe, is some kind of hybrid in between the two. That it, it has a, a few components that are mechanical and a few components that are electronic and are all mixed together to basically get you down the road. I wasn't kidding when I said these things were complex. Now, I'm hoping to open this thing up and find a planetary gear setup, but I really don't know. I've never been into one of these transmissions before. The only thing I do know is that this transmission uh, failed. Uh, second gear was the problem. It didn't have second gear, so I expect to find some issues with second gear when I get in here. Spinning it around. This is where uh, your axle goes in for one side, and the axle on the other side goes in here. So that would make this portion here the differential or the final drive of the transmission. So in essence, you could look at this portion as the same as that axle assembly that you see in the back of a rear wheel drive car, but it's just compacted together. In fact, what they would refer to this as is a uh, transaxle. And part of that is, is because it, it houses the final drive uh, or differential assembly in addition to all the components of the transmission. Now this guy here, I do know what this is. This is the speed sensor. And this sends a signal to your, not only your speedometer, but it also um, uh, sends a signal to the, the transmission computer to let you know about how fast you're going. Aside from how far into your throttle, uh, the computer also wants to know how fast you're going uh, to decide when it is that you need to change gears or when it is for the torque converter to go into lockup. We'll talk about that possibly in another video as far as uh, the torque converter because that in and of itself I think would make a good video. Once again, it's an electronic sensor. Uh, I've actually done videos on the diagnosis of these, but, but you'll find that it's, it's tooth or, or it's, uh, has a set of teeth that goes to the final drive that we'll be able to get a better look at here at some point. So the speedometer is always splined to the final drive. One more thing, up here, this is a vent. Anytime you have gears moving in a closed space, you need to vent the case. So whether it's a differential, whether it's a transmission or an engine, engine uses the PCV system. Anytime you have moving parts inside of an enclosed space, you need to vent it. So sometimes uh, these vents will get clogged and when they do get clogged, they will actually cause the seals of the transmission to leak because pressure will build up on the inside of the case. So uh, if you do have a vent like this, make sure it's not clogged and make sure it's in such a position to where it can't get water or something in here. Sometimes they have a, a check valve or something on the inside of these to prevent any kind of water intrusion. Uh, but some are just vents. And if they are just vents and there is water that gets in there, water and transmission fluid, uh, not so good. It ends up looking a lot like a strawberry milkshake. The first thing I'm going to remove is the torque converter. Now this guy here, like I said, deserves a video in and of itself. And I'm, I'm going to make a video just on the torque converter. But for now, I'm going to remove it from the transmission so you can get an idea of, of what's, what's behind it. And it just rests in here. It's just pushed into the bell housing. You know, it's sort of shaped like a bell. And it just slides right off of there. It's really kind of a cool thing. We'll get a look inside that in another video. Now we are inside the bell housing. This would be the input shaft uh, to the transmission. And also inside behind here, this assembly here is the front pump. This is basically the heart of the transmission. Everything about an automatic transmission relies on pressures. And those pressures, uh, well, at least the volume of fluid. Remember, pressure is not created by pumps, but the volume of fluid is created by the pump. And this is driven by the spinning motion of the torque converter. So this basically pumps fluid all throughout the automatic transmission and allows it to work. One thing it's, it's important to note is the identification of the transmission itself. Uh, many times, transmissions are identified by the amount of bolts and the shape of the, the pan for the filter. Not all transmissions have these pans, but uh, also there may be a tag uh, on the outside here. And this, this should basically tell us anything we need to know about the transmission, or at least I think so. There may also be casting marks on the outside of the bell housing. There's, there's lots of different ways to identify them. Uh, I would consult the service manual for the vehicle that you're working on to know exactly 
what those numbers mean. But like I said, many times transmissions are identified by the pan, which is up underneath here that we really can't see, and the amount of bolts on the outside of it. And then they're also uh, separated by three speed, four speed, five speed, and you know, they're all the way up to eight speed now uh, in some transmissions. But uh, this one, I believe is a four speed automatic transmission. Right here's the pan that I talked about. Um, and we're fortunate enough on this Toyota to have a drain bolt to where we can remove that to uh, drain the fluid out without having to pull the pan to do it. I, I really like it when I see these drain bolts. But once again, to identify an automatic transmission, many times it's identified by the shape of the pan and the amount of fasteners around the outside of it. I'm going to see if I can remove this upper assembly um, off of here. I'm going to start by removing these fasteners around the outside and then I'm going to get the ones uh, that, are, that are in in the bell housing itself. Uh, once again, I'm not an automatic transmission expert. I'm just gonna take this apart and basically tell you about the parts that I know about. These came out a little more difficult because they have Loctite on them apparently. Loctite is almost like a glue and it's basically there to prevent fasteners from backing out. Normally I think there would be a puller assembly that would go across the front of this that we could run down into here and pull this pump assembly right on up out. And honestly I don't know if, if my technique of prying this uh, bell housing assembly off of here is going to be as successful as I hope, but we'll find out. And it's, it's just a dissection, so I'm not too worried about it. All right, let's employ the trusty pry bars and see if we can find purchase. I think it's going to cooperate. Find a nice little ear right up here that I could slip under. This is the uh, back side to that pump assembly. And you see we've got like lots of teeny tiny little bearings and everything down in there. I'm gonna see if I can get the back side of this pump off because I think it's important to show you how this uh, pump looks on the inside so you get an idea of actually how pumps like this work. Most oil pumps are of this type and they, uh, and, and you can really get a feel for, for how pumps work in general just by looking at that. Now we're on the uh, inside of the transmission itself and this is kind of cool. Uh, I'm going to try to see, well th this one's a little bit different. Once again we're looking at the input shaft. This was a thing that actually uh, went into the torque converter and uh, once again it drives the front pump but it also um, drives the, the assembly in here, the gear assembly. which. I'm hoping we're looking at a planetary gear setup because uh, that's what is in most automatic transmissions are, are planetary gears. Uh, and I think that's what we're looking at, so I'm a little bit excited. This right here is your differential or final drive assembly. So the power is delivered inside the transmission uh, and then the, the gear is selected depending upon you know lots and lots of conditions and lots of things. And uh, it outputs here to what looks like a counter shaft uh, in this particular case. And then that counter shaft is splined to the final drive. So this is what drives the axles, which drives your wheels. And this right here, this guy, it's funny that it's got a little bit of slop to it. That's what splines to your speedo gear. Let me grab that real quick. Remember that our friend, the speedometer? Well, he was sitting right here and you can see how it splines right up to that. And as, as this spins, this, this rotates and is equated to uh, vehicle speed. You can calculate all those things using special math. It's not really special. It's uh, just algebra, I believe. But I think what we can do now is just lift the carrier assembly, or at least half of it. Yeah, the carrier assembly right up and up out of there. 
There's your differential. These are the called the spider gears, and they basically make it so that uh, <laughs> the wheel with the least amount of traction gets power. Uh, we'll go into differentials in depth at some point, but but the long and the short of it is, is this is what the axles go into, and uh, that's your final drive. Then we can get into the meat and potatoes of what we're looking at here, and this, this is, I believe, the parking gear. So what happens when you put your car in park is you see these little notches around the outside of this assembly? Well, when, you, when you've got it in park, this comes in and locks into place. And that's it. This, this is one of the things I wanted to show you about what's inside an automatic transmission, and that is that this is the only thing holding your car in place when it's in park. So yeah, it locks, it locks the gears and everything into place, but ultimately, that's it. So the lesson here, use your parking brake, because I gotta tell you, just that little piece right there doesn't seem like a whole lot. Yes, it does its job, but for me, the peace of mind in knowing that it's not just that, that there's also my parking brake holding my vehicle in place makes me feel a whole lot better. It really does. It looks like I'm gonna need two hands to start lifting these components out of here to uh, explore the rest of what we have. You know, I just thought of something before we go and start taking apart the internals of the transmission. I'm gonna see if I can get this pump apart. You can see that this is a washer, probably a thrust washer is what it's called. And there's lots of these. There's lots of these O-rings too, which are also very important because once again, pressure is everything in an automatic transmission. And that pressure is directed to different places and held into place by these different seals. These seals are made by a lot of, are made of a lot of different things, and I believe these are Teflon seals. I'm trying to see if I can get one of these off here for you. In fact, when you rebuild an automatic transmission, you'll find that there's a whole lot of seals. This being one of them, a uh, type of seal that's in here. And this isn't exactly rubber, it's made of, I believe, Teflon. Uh, and they seal off, I suspect, an oil passage. Yeah. See this hole right here? That directs pressure to something. I'm not exactly sure what, but it's over in, in the clutch drum inside there. And that pressure goes from here into that clutch drum and, it, and is held, it is sealed in place by this. So when an automatic transmission fails, there are a lot of different things that can cause it to fail. And a failure of one of these seals is one of those things. So if uh, it, it could be like a clutch or a band or something like that, or, or maybe even something electronic that's caused it to fail, but something that is sometimes overlooked is a failure of one of these seals. In fact, a very common failure for torque converters in the torque converter clutch, you'll, you probably have heard that before, is the seals going to the torque converter clutch itself. There's pressure that's directed inside the, clutch conver or the torque converter clutch to activate the clutch inside of it. And if the seals around the outside of that go bad, that pressure bleeds off past those seals and that torque converter clutch never activates. Now, I'm not saying that that's what these seals go to. They actually go to the drum over on the transmission, which I'll show you here in a minute. But I just wanted to show you some seals and the importance of those seals in the transmission. gonna get a look at our pump assembly. Very happy about that. This is your pump. I'm just gonna set this other part of the housing. This is the back side of the housing. It sits in here. In fact, this, these little teeth right here are what the torque converter splines to, I believe. Uh, and as a result, it rotates this assembly. And you are looking at an oil pump. You're looking at the heart of this transmission also. So right there is an oil pump. You're like, what? And most oil pumps look like this. They're just a couple of gears that spin. And the way they work, give you another look here. The way they work is, and sometimes these uh, teeth are keyed, so you have to make sure that, you know, th there may be a dot here and a dot here, you have to make sure that those line up in order for this to work. So as the engine rotates, it drives the torque converter, which I believe is splined right here to this inner gear on this pump, and it turns this assembly. 
And as a result, what it, what it does is because of these gears meshing together here, it creates a low pressure zone and it draws the fluid into this area. Well, that's then moved through to the other side and pushed you know, through. So it, it creates a volume of flow. Remember, once again, pumps don't create pressure. Uh, valves and springs and, and resistance to the pump flow creates pressure. So this just creates volume. But this, in essence, is how the front pump on the transmission works. It's lined up to the torque converter. The torque converter spins this, and voila, there you go. Here's the back side of that pump. You can almost see where the fluid flows in and flows out. And that's exactly what it does. And because of those tight spaces, it moves that fluid around. And here is our torque converter. And these are the key waves that I'm talking about here. So look at that. That's what that torque converter is driving. So that torque converter spins the oil pump and moves fluid through the transmission. Kind of cool, huh? Okay, before I put this under the bench, I want to point out one last thing. Bearings. These are roller bearings. Um, if you've got a noise inside your transmission, it's possible you have a problem with the bearing. And this one looks like it's just held in by this retainer, so it'd be easy enough to take out. But uh, these, these bearings help support things like this one in particular supports this counter shaft here. So bearings are another comp important component to automatic transmissions, and you have to inspect them for any damage or, or pitting or anything that could uh, possibly cause them not to... Uh, to make noise or to maybe they've failed. Uh, it's not something you see often, but it is something that uh, to watch out for. Now I think, uh, I actually think I can take this, this portion out here, right here, this drum, and I'm just gonna lift it on up out here. Looks like I'm gonna have to undo this band. And there's a couple of things that, that control an automatic transmission or help activate the different gears, and they use a couple of different things. They use clutches and they use bands many times. And right here we have a band that's on the outside of this drum that actuates this, uh, this assembly. I'll give you a close-up look here. Now hopefully you can get a better look at what I'm looking at here. And there's around the outside of this a band around the outside of this drum. And depending upon, I'm going to have to look at it and find out what gear is what. But normally, a lot of times second gear is, is controlled by a band. And what will happen is, as you can see this actuator here, there's a little pin there. When there's pressure directed to it uh, through the valve body and it's told to shift into whatever gear this is, which I'm gonna say maybe is second gear, uh, it activates this and this band is cinched around the outside and holds this thing in place. So it may normally spin. In fact, we've got a little bit of spinning here with the main shaft. But this, this may normally spin, but when the band holds it, then this part of it is not going to be able to, to spin, and there may be something else on the inside that is. And that helps dictate what gear ratio you're in. And uh, that's not a really good explanation. I think it's a lot easier if I show you the actual gears. But my point is, is I wanted to show you that there is a band around the outside of this assembly, and I want to see if I can uh, pull this pin maybe and release tension on it so I can lift this on up out of here. Now it looks like the easiest thing to do is just to take this pin out, and once I do that, the band should come loose, which it just did. You saw it fall down there. So we should be able to pull this right up out of here. Cool, huh? And that is a clutch on the inside of that. So on the outside we have the surface where the band holds it, and on the inside, we have an actual clutch assembly, which uh, we can take apart and get a look at here. Why don't we just take this band out of here while we're at it. Just like I said, it's a band. It goes around the outside of this drum, and when activated, it holds this drum in place. So when activated, it's, it's pinched up tight, and as it pinches up, it keeps this thing from spinning. You can see the sort of shiny surface on the outside of it. And there's a, a material to help it grab hold on the inside here. Now sometimes, well many times, bands are adjustable. So you adjust the, the tension on these things to be just right so that they, uh, 
they operate properly. What else can we pull out of here? Ah, uh, yes, it is a planetary gear assembly. I'm so happy. I'm gonna pull this out and I'll show you how it works. Right here. is the planetary gear assembly. We're gonna talk about this here in a second. Another uh, part to that planetary gear assembly. In fact, this center uh, gear here is another important component, which has yet another gear on the opposite side of it. Looks like we've got a giant snap ring holding in the rest of this. Uh, lots of things inside trans automatic transmissions are held in by snap rings. Here's one of them. There we go. Return springs on that, on this disc. We've got some uh, clutch pieces in here. Another inside to a clutch assembly. The splines on the outside are also important because in this case, they are splined to the back of this assembly. And then they dictate whether this rotates or not or is engaged or disengaged, depending upon what gear we're in. Let's talk a little bit about clutches real quick. Okay, here's a set of a, a clutch. And, and for those of you that, uh, do any work on motorcycles and have seen motorcycle clutches uh, virtually identical in fact you may be looking at this thinking the same thing we've well, got a series of steel rings and then you've got a set of friction discs and they, and they go in layers like like a sandwich and how this works is is when this is inside of an assembly like you saw down inside the transmission is pressure is directed on the outside of this so that these things get squeezed together. And as they get squeezed together, they can activate a component within the transmission, such as what we have here, because the fact that it's splined to this means that when this clutch is active, it's going to make this component either spin with uh, what's happening or not spin, depending upon whether there's pressure or not. Then you have return springs to where when the pressure is released, this helps push everything apart so that it disengages because not only do you want to engage things, but you also need to disengage things inside the automatic transmission.